Hello, Derek, the polymetallurgist here. And I wanted to share a little bit about total versus effective case depth. First, I'll point out that this testing follows a diffusion-based heat treatment process, such as gas carburization. The goal in processing is to use a precisely controlled atmosphere to drive carbon into the surface of the steel. A relatively higher carbon concentration in the atmosphere pushes the carbon into the steel, which has a lower base carbon. This creates a case. To verify the total depth to which carbon was diffused, a visual inspection of a perpendicular cut piece is performed. A strong acid etchant is used to show contrast between the hardened case zone of that higher carbon content and the comparatively softer core region of lower carbon. This depth is considered total case. Effective case depth uses the general same concept of cutting a piece perpendicularly, um, except that the piece is mounted and polished and a traverse very small micro hardness indents is made. This linear traverse moves from the surface into the core and generally shows that there's a higher carbon, higher hardness of that higher carbon zone in the case and it trails off down into the lower hardness of that core region. The distance along that traverse correlates to the distance in from the surface to the core, and the depth at which that hardness equals 50 HRC or 513 Vickers, is the general, generally accepted standard, that is the effective case depth. Effective case depth is, is always less than the total case depth, but hardenability and part configuration influence their relationship. So you may only have two thirds of the total case depth be where the effective case depth is. It might be different for a different alloy system or, or thickness of part as an example. As both methods are prevalent today, we at Paula would love to discuss further questions that you or your engineers might have on creating or interpreting case testing callouts. Thanks, have a good day.